The Kremlin managed to convince Russian society that the Ukrainian armed forces' invasion of the Kursk region is something insignificant and does not matter at all. CNN writes about this. Despite Russia's increased efforts in recent days, Ukraine continues to control hundreds of square kilometers of Russian territory. The Russian offensive is mainly happening on the flanks of our bridgehead. They continue to try to advance, but their successes are gradual. Somewhere, they manage to take a street in a village. But this is happening in both directions. We are also counter-attacking and pushing them back, a Ukrainian battalion commander named Dmitry, who is fighting in Kursk, told CNN. According to experts, to drive the Ukrainian armed forces out of the Kursk region, Russia deployed about 40,000 troops who were pulled in small numbers from different parts of the front. It's the equivalent of rummaging through the cushions of the sofa for loose change. Mark Galliotti, a senior fellow at the Royal United Service Institute, a UK think tank, told, as experts note, Russia is trying to avoid diverting any significant forces from the front lines in Ukraine to fight at Kursk. Although the Ukrainian invasion was initially a shock to both the government and ordinary Russians, the Kremlin has managed to downplay the significance of this event in the eyes of the people. The strategy is to distract the public from what has happened, which is obviously a big embarrassment, and to create the impression that it is not serious says John Law, a research fellow at the Russia and Eurasia program at Chatham House. Putin's government has described the Ukrainian armed forces offensive in the Kursk region as a raid and deliberately downplayed the status of its counterattack, calling it a counter-terrorist operation. Instead of focusing resources on liberating its own territory, the Russian military has expanded its offensive on several fronts in Ukraine, particularly in the key areas of Kharkiv, Donbass and Zaporizhia. It seems to be a very high priority for the Kremlin to push as far as possible in the Donbass, despite the losses. There is a window of sorts that is about to close because you are getting into this time of year when the roads are turning to mud. Law added. Ukrainian troops killed another 1,300 Russian soldiers during hostilities in the past 24 hours, brining Kremlin's total losses in the war to approximately 668,930 personnel, the General Staff of Ukrainian Armed Forces reported. In a statement posted on its Facebook page on Sunday, the General Staff also revealed Russia's losses in terms military hardware and equipment. Thus, Ukraine destroyed nine Russian ranks, 49 armored combat vehicles, 29 artillery systems, one multiple launch rocket system, MLRS, two air defense systems, 45 operational tactical UAVs, 71 vehicles and fuel tanks, one unit of specialized equipment over the past day. Overall, Russia lost 19,410 artillery systems, 1,231 multiple launch rocket systems, MLRs, 978 air defense systems, 369 aircraft, 329 helicopters, 16,992 operational tactical UAVs, 2,619 cruise missiles, 28 warships and boats boats, one submarine, 26,584 vehicles and fuel tanks, 3,435 units of specialized equipment since the start of the full-fledged invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Russia has not publicized the number of its military losses in the war yet. The Air Force has already begun to use the most modern aviation missiles of the short-range class. Air-to-Air -air AIM 9X Block II Missiles lit up for the first time on Ukrainian weapons. AIM-9X is installed on a wide range of modern aircraft, in particular the F-16. They can also be used by the NASAM's air defense system to destroy KR and other aerial targets. A U.S. Navy-led joint program with the U.S. Air Force, the AIM-9X Sidewinder missile also has 31 foreign military sales partners. The Advanced Infrared Tracking, short-range missile is combat-proven in several theaters around the world. The weapon is configured for easy installation on a wide range of modern aircraft, including the F-15C Eagle, F-15E Strike Eagle, F-16 Fighting Falcon, F-18 Super Hornet, E divided by a minus-18G Growler, 
F-22 Raptor and all F-35 Joint Strike Fighter variants. As part of NASAMS, also known as the National Advanced Surface-to-Air Missile System AIM -9X adds a short-range layer of defense. The AIM-9X Block II missile adds a redesigned fuse and a digital ignition safety device to improve handling and in-flight safety. It's equipped with updated electronics, including a lock-on after-launch capability using a new weapon data link to support beyond visual range engagements. Sidewinder is a U.S. trademark of the Department of the Navy, an agency of the U.S. government.